Paleopathologies are super cool. Everyone knows of Big Al because of the documentary, but before and after they were discovered, plenty of other extinct animals have been found with all sorts of messed up stuff going on with them. Some survived their injuries, while others died from them. But in the end, they all died. A new study describes the noggin of an armored dinosaur that adds to the pile of weird stuff going on with dinosaur bones. Ankylosaurs were a diverse group of heavily armored herbivorous dinosaurs that appeared in the Jurassic and persisted up until the Cape Pig extinction. They are typically divided into two families, the Notosaurids and the Ankylosaurids. The latter are characterized by a clubbed tail and first appeared in the Lower Cretaceous, eventually spreading throughout Laurasia. They became, as far as we know, the dominant herbivores in the Gobi region while remaining relatively rare, although just as diverse, if not more so, in western North America. Asian members of the family display typical ankylosaurid features. The posture is obligately quadrupedal with a broad barrel-chested body, stout limbs, and a tail ending in a blunt fused club. The wide skull is armored, and bony dermal armor plates protect the neck, back, and sides of the animal. Ankylosaurids differ from other dinosaurs in many respects. The skulls lack any obvious temporal openings, with the infratemporal and supratemporal fenestrae roofed over by osteoderms. It was like they were wearing helmets. Unlike the open and airy skulls of many other dinosaurs, the osteodermal covering, or the bony skin armor, obscures sutures and much of the internal structure in ankylosaurids. The airway is unusually complex, with nasal turbinates reported for some genera. The tail club is perhaps the most distinctive feature of ankylosaurids, a derived trait that helps to separate this group from the clubless notosaurids. The tail club of the Mongolian ankylosaurid Cychania chalcinensis is typical, with the center vertebrae fused into a club handle and strengthened by ossified tendons, and with several large osteoderms welded together to form the characteristic knob at the tip of the tail. An array of bony dermal armor covers the back and neck regions, and in some species extends down the tail. All known ankylosaurids also have two massive half rings or arches of bone that protected the neck and shoulder region. Some ankylosaurs also had bony eyelids, and the skin itself was practically ossified, containing thousands of tiny ossicles. Everywhere in the skeletons of ankylosaurs, there was a tendency to grow copious quantities of bone the biggest, boniest, angry pineapples or pine cones to ever walk the face of the planet. Though I personally like the Ceratopsians as a whole more, I personally identify most with the ankylosaurs. A brand new study, fresh off the digital presses, has just been released by its journal, The Anatomical Record, by Tatiana Dumanova, Paul Pankalski, William Gallagher, Julie Engiles, and Peter Dodson. Shouldn't use my name. Dodson! Dodson! We've got Dodson here! No, not that Dodson. The real paleontologist, Peter Dodson. See, so nobody cares. The team CT scanned three Asian ankylosaur skulls back when they were in the US during a traveling exhibition in the 90s. The skulls of Tarchia, Shamosaurus, and Cychania. The latest paper zeroes in on the skull of the Tarchia as it preserves some unique internal damages that indicate some wacky shenanigans before it died. The Tarchia skull, specimen PIN 3142250, is from the late Cretaceous Nemect formation of the Gobi Desert. It was initially described by the lead author, Tatiana Tumanova, back in 1987 without reference to the insides, which cannot be observed directly. The specimen, now the holotype of Tarchia terese, is typically ankylosaurid with a wide skull, broad premaxillary beak, prominent caputegulae or peaked osteoderms covering the snout and frontal region, 
and prominent squamosal and quadrutojugal horns at the posterior corners of the skull. In CT scanning the three Asian skulls to explore their internal anatomy, the researchers discovered a huge bony lesion within the airway close to another bony defect through the roof of the skull. Pathologies have been reported for various dinosaurs, including ankylosaurs, but nasty objects with the radiologic features identified within this Tarchia specimen have yet to be described in a dinosaur. Interestingly, tumors per se seem to be largely limited among dinosaurs to hadrosaurs, although this may be preservational bias. There are a lot more hadrosaur specimens known to science, and they seemed to be some of the most numerous and most diverse during the entire Cretaceous. So of course the majority of dinosaurs known to preserve tumors would likely be the hadrosaurs. To help discern and localize lesions within the Tarchia skull, they digitally sliced and diced the skull. The airway and sinuses are visible on the CT scan, although the slice thickness of 3 mm means that some internal segmentations are unclear. Others do not appear to have been fully ossified or hardened into bone, and some parts are obscured by the pathologies. Erosion may also have removed some internal structures. In short, and because the internal nasal anatomy and terminology is outside of our pay grade and purview, Tarchia has really big airways. The inside of its nostrils are very big and gross and rankly, vacuous, and goes in all sorts of directions. This is not entirely a shock, since other ankylosaurs who have had their noggins scanned have also shown this sort of thing. Their snoots are big, fat, and chunky. Because the insides are also big and chunky and also like folded over on themselves to expand the length of the nasal passageways. You can see the two weird bony lesions here in these CT images. The green thing here is the large mass, and the blue thing in front of it is a shell of osteoproliferative exostosis. So like a continually building bony tumor of sorts. Despite all the cancerous terms I've been using, the team found that the structures of the bony growths in the skull really aren't consistent with osteomata, which are new pieces of bone usually growing on another piece of bone, typically the skull, a benign tumor. Architectural features of the Tarchia's sinus exostosis also differ from the osteopathological features associated with the ossifying fibromas or benign tumors that are composed of fibrous or connective tissue that become hardened into bone, and the other proliferative fibro-osseous legions. The cause, set of causes, or manner of causation of a disease or condition, the etiology of these lesions cannot be determined. But what can be determined about it is that it was caused by trauma, likely some kind of puncture that was in the chronic, partial stages of healing when the animal died. The source of the injury will likely never be known, but the author team came up with some speculative scenarios. One major cause could have been predation. Some large predator, probably Tarbosaurus, just came up and chomped on this poor pineapple's head. But because Tarchia was heavily armored and well armed, the attack did not kill it, and it lived for a while afterwards. Maybe the Tarbosaurus eventually caught up to the Tarchia and got his dinner, or maybe the animal just died from the injuries. Another scenario the author team came up with is intraspecific combat. Ankylosaurids appear to have been solitary animals. There are no documented bone beds to suggest herding behavior in these dinosaurs, and they were quite rare overall, although juveniles have been found in death groupings. Solitary animals do not need to establish their position in the social hierarchy, and thus are less likely to engage in intraspecific combat. Nevertheless, they certainly came together to mate, and males have battled among themselves, inflicting injury in the process. Various authors have suggested that ankylosaurs engaged in intraspecific combat and slash or sexual display. Neither the tail club nor the other pointed postcranial osteoderms were well suited to make a puncture wound on top of the head. 
however, Paul Penkalski and Tatyana Tumanova concluded in a 2017 paper that in some Mongolian ankylosaurids, including Tarchia, the squamosal horns likely developed from a low-keeled osteodermal shape in juveniles into a true horn in adults. Thus, a wound resulting from bovid-style headbutting or horn locking is a plausible cause of the pathology. Some ankylosaurid taxa have sizable 10 to 12 centimeter pointed horns, while others do not. At the same time, tail club size varies dramatically among taxa, hinting at different forms of intraspecific combat, ritualized combat, or sexual display in different animals. Assuming this was an injury due to a tyrannosaur bite, the formidable defenses of the ankylosaur may have helped it to survive the initial attack. However, pathogenic or opportunistic microorganisms that could have been introduced through a bone-penetrating wound would have resulted in an infectious sinusitis. Based on the extent and organization of the sinus exostoses in this tarchia, these lesions were likely chronic persisting for weeks to months if not longer, and could have eventually proved fatal via meningeal or systemic sepsis, or by limiting this animal's ability to breathe or acquire sustenance. However, without additional analyses including histologic and chemical analyses of the mineralized concretions and reactive bone, a definitive cause of the lesions cannot be determined from external visual and tomographic evaluations alone. Hence, the series of events resulting in this animal's ultimate demise remain speculative. It should be noted that a common hypothesis as to how tyrannosaurids killed their prey was that they had bacterially charged saliva, like what was thought to be in the mouths of the Komodo dragons. Under this hypothesis, they would allow food to fester in their mouths, and then their bites would be fatal. All they needed to do was land a single bite, even a glancing one that did not do much damage to its prey. Then, using their superior smelling abilities, track down their prey once they had succumbed to an infection. Problem is, the Komodo dragon analogy is moot because it was found that Komodo dragons actually do secrete venom, and that is how just a single bite from them can be fatal to prey that is far larger than them. Now, tyrannosaurs may have had naturally acclimatized bacteria in their mouths, just like every living thing on the planet, but specifically supercharged by bacteria due to rotting flesh in their teeth is unlikely, and venom is quite implausible. With the default hypothesis of a lipped condition in tyrannosaurs, this makes even less sense, as any remaining bits of food in the mouth would likely be dissolved and swallowed over time, as is the case in most living animals alive today that have extra oral coverings. Another interesting thing to note here is that the armor and weapons of the ankylosaurs seem to have been primarily for show, not for action. However, they could not possibly only be used for one thing, the super strong and mobile tail base near the pelvis, the long overly ossified and strengthened handle ending in a lump of huge solid bone may have been first adapted for defense or for mating display and was then co-opted for either defense or display afterwards. There is direct evidence of intraspecific combat among ankylosaurs in the form of broken armor and bones and stress fractures in their tails that could have only been made by other ankylosaurs due to the size and angle of the damage and they always seem to survive this damage. Well, that's all I have for you. Just thought it was neat. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Elephant Tier patrons Abby Smith, Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Cherry Shaw, Chris Frampton, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Ed Peretz, Isaiah Garza, Jax the Hacks, Natty Cat, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus, Staniforth Hopkins, Steve Bradshaw, Thea Svensson, and Extraterrestrial.
as well as my top S tier Tyrannosaurus patrons, Admin, Antron, Aphid Kirby, Cyber, Dana Manchester, Danny Van Heck, Henry Brennan, Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Joshua Mana, Panic, Radio 404, Robert Kessler, Ruben Zachariah, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, and The Dogman.